Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing a track breakdown of my tune Street Wisdom. This came out on Automatic Writing. This is a French label, a very nice track, breakbeat, some really cool samples, some vocals, a bit of everything, even some of the machines behind me were used in the creation of this track. Also, we've recently launched the Syntho app, so you can now get access to all of our content on both web and mobile. All the social features will be coming soon. So if you're serious about making music and want to learn and connect with others, check it out via the link attached to this video. Let's get into this one. Welcome to today's video. It is a track breakdown of the highly anticipated Street Wisdom, which is coming on the French label Automatic Writing. I made this track in 2020 January, sorry, 2021 January. And yeah, I did a little video in the studio jamming it out. Um, I knew it was decent. I didn't know it was that good. And then I got a very, very, very good reaction to it, uh, which led to me finishing it off and really ending up with a really cool tune. And I think it's got some attitude. It's... It's a cool one. Let's just put it that way. It's a very, very cool tune. And got to say, I'm proud of it. Um, so, yeah, we're going to look through all the elements. I've got a quite a fresh memory of making the track. So I can kind of explain my thought process between a lot of the sounds and influences and things like that, which should be helpful. As I know a lot of the track breakdowns I've done in the past, I made the track quite a while before. Um doing the breakdown so a lot of stuff can be forgotten but i've got to say this track is super super cool when i say cool i just mean got attitude and a bit of flair melodies on point so let's give it a little two minute play and then we'll get stuck into it Cowbell is just killer. So fucking killer. So originally this little organ lead that came in wasn't actually there. The label said, oh, we think you need a little sound in that gap. So that's where that came in. Sounds cool though. Play the main drop. This break just really smooth and chilled. Really cool little grooves. When it goes uh, to that bit in the club, sounds really, really cool. I've not actually played it too much in the club, which is a bit annoying, but I never seem to go for it. But when I do play it, it's gone off every time. So yeah, for those wondering, the track will be out in a couple of weeks, maybe next week. And yeah, we're on the 11th of November at the moment. So I'm just going to delete this return track there as it's not being used. Before we dive into the track, I'm going to explain my send and returns. 
On A, I've got a short drum reverb with the lexicon, the preset alt club snare. I always use a short reverb on A, long reverb on B, which is the lexicon again, which is this preset here. Pitch piano, rich piano. Uh, then C, I've got a delay, which is a eighth dot ping pong delay. Then on D, I've got the Galaxy Tape Echo, as you all know by now, I love the Tape Echo. Then E, we've got the Culture Vulture Distortion, which I don't know if I'm using it in this track, so it's a cool little distortion. If you've got any questions on the sender and tones, don't hesitate to message me, but I did a tutorial right at the start of creating synth though, and to be honest, not much has changed since then. So go back and watch that, refresh yourselves. Uh, so, we're going to start with the, they're going to go with the, through the drum elements just so we can get an understanding of what's going on. Um, I'm going to turn everything off. Yes, I'm going to turn everything off. I'm going to build up one by one. So if we start with the kick, the kick in this track is a nice 909. It's got a bit of EQ on it. I just dipped it where I thought some harsh frequencies were, but as you can tell when you A and B it, not much is going on. Cutting off at 30 hertz to get rid of any dirty low end that we don't need, which is kind of standard practice. I've now realized though that if you hover your mouse over the line with fab filter and don't touch anything, it then automatically comes up with these points where the resonances are, and you can actually double click there like that, and then See, that's quite resonant here. I could have dipped it there. It sounds quite nice with that dip. So yeah, that's something you can try out. The sustain's down a bit, as sometimes, you see that's a bit boomy. But then I pull it down. Undo's not working, edit there. I'll have to do up here, edit, undo, but you control direction. Ah, uh, my Ableton seems to do this quite a lot recently. Um, the undo seems to, I think it's because of my push. I'm gonna turn it off. So yeah, minus seven sustain. Release is quite tight. It's been detuned by one semitone, which won't be making much difference at all. Nice solid 99 kick. I've got mono on there, so it stays on the center. Then we've got the transient shaper. If we turn this off. Sounds nice without it. This makes it pop a bit more with this. So in here, I'm just tightening up some of the low frequencies as you can do the multiband. So the low, I've got it a bit tighter and a bit faster on the attack. And then the mid range, similar. And the top, similar again. So just so it sounds a bit tighter. Probably doesn't really need it. It's a nice kick anyway. But we've got it. So we're going to bring the bass in afterwards because we've got two different bass lines in this track. We're going to go for the 808 snare next, which sounds very, very nice. And if I'm honest, it's the sample which is making it sound so good. So I'm going to click show it in browser. Hmm, I can't see what pack it's from. I think it's from one of the gold baby packs. Um, I'll be able to search it, I think. 808... SD to C. Show in Finder. Not there. Show in Browser. Is it there? No, ignore that. It's one of the gold baby packs. Um, because I've uh, collected all and saved. It's saved in the wrong folder, so I can't find the original folder. But Gold Baby is a brand which I highly recommend checking out as their samples sound great and they already sound kind of analog and warm opposed to trying to do it all yourself. You see that? It's got nothing on it. It's got an EQ. Got a bit of reverb, screen center A. And it's simple as that, guys. I used a nice sample to begin with and didn't overprocess it. So, I'm 
having a look at the hats next. I have not even EQ'd these hats. And it's worth noting actually, I did actually have this track stem record, stem mastered. So what you do is you stand the mastering engineer's stems, eight stems. So I sent him like the hi hats uh, in one and then they can do like EQ compression cost more but the label paid for it but that's why i've not done much eq on some of the sounds but as you can tell it sounds fucking good without eq i wouldn't recommend not eq in your hats by the way because if i put an eq on here now you'll see there's a lot of dirt there but it's worth noting here that EQing your hearts isn't going to make the track sound good. Like a groove's a groove, no matter what you do on the processing. So, um, yeah, that's what I've got on the hearts. So this is just a 16th groove going. And we've got this quantized T swing preset, which is where you can adjust the percentage, which I've shown you a lot. Watch my tutorial on swing if you're not familiar with the quantized T. And if we look in the snare pattern as well, actually, you can see it's kind of... These offbeat ones, I've got the velocities down. And we've got the call and response. And this little one here is giving it so much groove. If we look back here, uh, to these, this snare, it's just straight, and then up here is where it starts to change and changes there. So I've color coded it so you can see in the arrangement where the snare pattern changes. It is really worth doing things like this and changing the melodies throughout the track. If you've got the exact same drum patterns from start to finish, the track's going to get very boring. Okay. So now with that, how groovy is that, guys? And if the hatch can see, you see this is the 16th hat doesn't run all the way through. Then when it gets there, when it's pink, it runs all the way through. And it's got such a nice groove, and you can see the velocities here dipping as well. Let's get this next close hat in. And there's definitely frequencies now that are clashing, there's no doubt about it, and it still sounds good. And this little groove here is adding so much. I think I slice this from a loop and you can hear it's like a birdie. We could have EQ'd this out. It's making no audible difference in my headphones. And me and Jocko spoke about this on our podcast that sometimes not EQing sounds. I'm not ad advocating no one to EQ anything, by the way. But when you go for this old, rougher sound, imperfections can add to the vibe. And we've all heard those old 80s, 90s tunes, and they just sound a mess, but they sound sick at the same time. And this is really kind of part of what I did here. So this drum nut, this groove now. Look, there's barely any processing all the sounds. This cowbell is just a cowbell. But what we did do is send it to the space echo. I can hear that space coming off the back of it. That tiny bit of extra delay is giving it that space and that room and that niceness. 
So let's look at the pattern. Slight velocity changes. Let's have a look. And you can just tell that the hats are throwing that high end and the cowbell now just sits really nice in between that snare, kick, and just dances the track forward. And then we're going to go straight over to the 808 rim, which plays the, the kind of counter melody to the cowbell. So it goes from cowbell. Just gives it a lot of groove. So you can just tell it sounds really nice. And then the open hat comes in once that rim drops out. Eight away again. I can tell a lot of the drums are all eight away. Eight away carbell, rim, hats. And you get this old school feeling now. I think it sounds fucking good. I'm still buzzing with this track. Then I've got the zap, which plays a big part as well. So listen to the zap. So that's the drums and the low end, and then we're going to go for the bass. So the first bass comes in here. And it's just got an EQ on it. And we're going to play it with this. I've really gone for just simplicity. And that bass is from the Yamaha TX81Z and it's the famous Lately Bass. If you search Lately Bass, uh, you'll be able to find a sample of it. I think I may have recorded it with Sidechain on. So you might have Sidechain on it. But listen to how sick that sounds. I think I've got the melody here. Do I have the melody here? Am I doing this for you? We lost it. Is this the melody? Hmm. No longer got the MIDI. It's good to bring it to re-record it. Eh? Ah, this might be it. There we go. Let's put this in here so we can have a look at it. Ah, so this is the melody. And you can see the space. You know, there's not loads of notes. Call and response. Call and response. No swing. All the notes are straight anyway. Sixteenth hat comes in. And that is the core of the groove. And we're going to keep staying on this half before the bass change. And we're going to look at this sound next. So this is just a texture. I sampled this from a track, like an intro of a track, and it just runs all the way through. And listen to that depth it's created. The depth it's added, is that the word? It now feels like there's that extra dimension at the back of the track, opposed to just being a beat and a groove this now kind of fills the whole thing in and makes it mystical and you could do this with just having like a, a pad sound and using loads of reverb on it and it's got a bit of lfo on it a bit of panning and how cool does that sound and you can just feel it pulsing underneath the track see that's disappeared again it's almost irregular as well, the way it comes in and out, and it adds a real trippiness to it. it. Almost sounds modulary. And let's just go back to this snare fill here. 
These little fills are so important. I would go as far as saying you shouldn't have any drops without some kind of fill in there. The kick could have stayed in, but some kind of drum roll of something. You all know how much I advocate. Is that the right word or is it I don't advocate? I encourage fills. Um, they are super important for making your track. Drive forward. Um, so we've got the drums, we've got this texture. Then we next got this, which is a little gem. I sampled from a record I bought. It's like a phased clav. It almost sounds like it's been on Filter Freak in Ableton. They've got a similar preset. It's got a rim shot in there. And it really just sounds like a completely fucked up loop with loads of effects on a, a few sounds. It almost sounds like a nightmare, you know, like a haunted rhythm. Dun, dun, it just completely fits the vibe of the creepiness of the track. So we've got the, uh, the cowbell that comes in. And I want to talk about this part now, as this is what I got inspired from by Sweely. So I'm going to hit the chords in here first, if I can find them. Chord, is this it? Here it is. So, I was listening to a Sweely track. And I was like, what the hell are these sounds? And they were like, it's a brass sound. So I'm going to try and see if Omnisphere has anything that I can... I should have found the Sweely track beforehand. But... I'd never really heard Cortis, like and I think it was. I can't think what track of his it was now. Um, but these brass sounds. So if you type in brass and Omnisphere. There we go, that could work. Warm cheese brass. So if we play a chord. With any of these brass sounds. In the release down. Got a bit of a um, delay on. And I was like, Jesus, these sounds are cool. And I figured out it was a brass sound. And I went to my OB6, which is behind me, the blue one. And I literally found the perfect preset on number two. It was called brass. It's literally called brass. And it gets, sounds like this. And these are the chords. In fact, the day when Sweetie played for you and me the other day, he said, oh, your automatic writing EP is sick. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> the, uh, the chords were very inspired by your vibe. Like, I would never have thought to use a brass sound for chords. And what I've done is, I've just put mic shift on them. And then reverb, ping pong, and tape. And you can hear the recording's a bit fucked up in them. Because you see the waveform, it's kind of different. And was, I think the signal was kind of, MIDI was a bit weak towards the machine. And they were kind of cutting out. You can see the waveforms are horrible. But it adds to the vibe. Listen, they, cut, they kind of cut out and jutter a bit. See that one there especially. Sounds super cool, them chords. So yeah, experiment with some brass sounds. Let me try and put this these chords with this sound. Straight away. See, that one's fucking sick. That sounds better than mine.
they sound better than mine. So yeah, guys, there's a little free bonus tip for today. You can recreate these chords using Omnisphere really, really, really easily. And then put a bit more delay on them. And then play it with the whole track. And then we could experiment with the filter and open it up. And the envelope as well. They sound super killer. That just shows you a bit of reverb, delay, and a nice chord and a nice sound. And you're on to a winner. It's not as complicated as you think. When you hear a lot of these sounds, you're kind of like, how the hell have they done that? I just try and break it down into tiny steps like first what does that sound kind of sound like it doesn't have to be the exact sound then i work from there you can get a kind of a sound that's 50 percent close then you just work your way down then through presets through sound design through a bit more research through instrumentation there's different ways to do it but in this way yeah i got there pretty quick and I happened to have a machine with the exact preset on well close to the preset that i wanted so it was happy days really so now we've got a super nice intro. We've got super nice musicality in the track. A lot of the time, I kind of get these killer grooves like in this track, and then there's not enough music elements going on. But in this one, I managed to get those chords, which I knew would carry the track through. So if we move this to 17 now, actually let's move it to 25. We're gonna turn on the vocal next because this was very off the cuff. I think it's NWA, isn't it? And um, it goes, I can't remember the actual track chord. I think it's called Street Knowledge by NWA, I think. Someone can correct me. And that vocal just bridges the track and makes the track identifiable. What was the track that went like this? These are things you need to echo in your head when making tracks and finishing them. Is there something in the track which is memorable? This track's got the chords, it's got the cowbell, it's got the vocal, it's got the weird rim shot it's got a lot of memorable moments and elements of the track which means i would think when it comes out in a few weeks it's going to do well because there's different things you can identify the track by which makes it ideable as well so got this drop which is super sick and then we can check this effect here so i'm liking a lot of vsts for effects these days so you can open up the profit v by autoria and there's a preset called dune in the effects bit you click on here then click on sfx i'm very wary of opening autoria as i got it off a dodgy man many years ago and it sometimes makes my computer crash so it's got this little like a down riser and it really bridges that gap and it makes this response with this other sound here, which is audio, I think. It's like a reverse of a car. And you see when you start combining these effects together, you can tell a story as well. It's all well and good having cool grooves, but you want your track to tell a story and almost talk to people. And I think this really does that with this little... So if we go back to here... A really nice response between the three sounds there. Are oh, we're gonna focus on this next section after? So here the cowbell comes in, and this little low end kind of echoey sound. Listen to this. So low, almost with the bass. Listen. Just echoes. It's got trillion. It's called Space Lead 97. It's got a really nice delay on it somewhere. There you go, chorus echo. And this just gives a bit more wonkiness to the low end. You can just hear it grooving, can't you? I bet you didn't notice that. So now I've got this effect. channel so we're not going to affect that we've got the lead sorry so we're going to look at this synth one first 
listen to this. So we've got more low end grooves here. So we've got between that and this. It's a cool lot of groove that isn't it? You just all bounce off each other. So the label actually said they felt it died a bit around this section. So what I did was I experimented with some sounds. So first, I'm going to show you the sound that I went with. So it's an organ sound. It's definitely like a G housey kind of funk. I can almost imagine Dr. Dre with these kind of grooves. Dead simple, but it works very effectively. Just a note that goes up at the end. I'll show you the sound that didn't make the cut. Let's see if you like this more. Kind of like this one, you know. I wish I'd used it. Should have used this definitely in another section and kept them both, like used them both in the track. I think the one that didn't go is actually better than the other one. <laughs> so we have got this profit sound here, which I want to show you. That was the effect that I missed out. So same kind of riser off the profit VST. If you show all the effects, guys, most VSTs have effects inside them. They're just quite tedious, but they are the difference makers in a lot of tracks, I believe. Got this one comes in here as well. Another riser, but an effect one. So you can see the call and respond between that and then this. And this comes back in here. I can see every eight bars something new comes in or two things come in and it's really important. And now we're going to get ready for this big ass drop. So you ready for the next bass? This is where the party starts. This audio's not been used, we'll delete that. It's going to be confusing. And neither is that one. So let's look at this bass. You're probably wondering, what did I do that on? And to be the bearer of bad news, it's an audio sample. So look at the melody. And then, does it change here? Yeah, it changes slightly here. So I'll like to hear those melodies change throughout the track. That little growl at the end. Whoy. There's actually a video of Suat playing this in a cave, which I'll maybe post with the video. We've got Synth 3 down here as well, so listen to this one. Again, an audio sample. And these just dance over the top. So if you listen to this break here, with the box and it goes to that. It tells the story. And we've got these effects here down here as well, which are just audio again. I'm almost certain. Ah, is this one not being used? Ah, it's down here, this. We can go. It's like a big drone sound. A 
again with some weird noises. So we've got all the sounds in now. I'm going. Oh, the phone effects. This is a really sick one, which helps the track a lot. This is off the Tal Uno, which is pretty cheap. Um, it's got really good effects in. Listen to that. And this really helps the track. It's almost like rain falling. And we'll let the track play now and we'll just enjoy it. As you can see, it is pretty simple. There's not much processing, it's more about the grooves and having cool melodies this one, opposed to having um, over-processed drums. And it's got that old vibe about it. I think the sound palette is really good as well, so I've chosen really good sounds. So yeah, experiment with some brass sounds, I would definitely... A, a nice chord can always go a long way, but you see how it's it's actually playing a, a melody, you know, like a rhythm. So it's not just playing the same chord. Then the bass is just the same notes, so just stick between the three same notes. Like, when was the last time one of you guys did one of these little chord rhythms? And the breakdown, not even much automation, if any. I think I did a filter uh, just on this bit here. I let it play. I wanted to create something that sounded simple but naughty. And I think I achieved that with this track. It will be coming out on digital, I believe. But the vinyl will be one to collect forever, I would I would think. So I would definitely recommend getting copy on vinyl as well as it's sick and if you've got any questions on this um, tune or this breakdown that I've missed don't hesitate to ask I can always do a follow-up video on anything maybe I'm gonna do a video creating something with brass chords because that atmosphere thing sounded sick so I'm actually I'm actually gonna save them chords because they sounded really cool um, let me do it as a new file new so I think that is all guys. I've got nothing on the drum bus. I've got nothing on the low and I've got nothing on the master. I think this just shows you that you don't need to do fucking stupid, stupid amounts of processing to get a super sick sound. This has been a track which a lot of you guys have said you already like. So hopefully you've learned some stuff from that and I'll hear some naughty 808 grooves from you guys very, very soon. I actually did a video, a reference track, creating an 808 track. And I think I actually used the sounds from that video in this. I just remembered that then. So. If you go into the referencing videos and you scroll down to like creating an 808 groove, I think it was in quite far back now. I've really, I created a tune with a similar vibe to this um, from scratch, like jamming. So it's worth checking it out. Thank you for watching guys. And I'll catch you very soon. So guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. If you've got any questions, put them below. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'm sure I will share some more content like this very soon. In the meantime, you can check out the Syntho app via the link in the description. Peace.